everybody. My name is Jason Hintersteiner, Emperor Wi-Fi on Twitter. For those of you who follow me on Twitter, for those of you who don't follow me on Twitter, why aren't you? Uh, the talk this morning is Wi-Fi the wrong way. When you don't have the luxury of deploying Wi-Fi the right way, I run a boutique consulting company called Imperial Network Solutions. Uh, if anybody's interested in Wi-Fi consulting services, come talk to me. I only have 10 minutes, so there are certain things that I'm not going to be able to talk about today. Uh, first is, I promised Keith I wouldn't use this word, so I'm not going to. Second, I'm not going to engage with Devin on a debate about 2.4 gigahertz. Uh, and third, uh, I'm not going to talk about this. I talked about, but come to CWNP Wi-Fi truck in the fall and you might hear a little bit more about that. What I'm going to talk about is the fact that it's 2018 but the world's still designing Wi-Fi like it's 1999, right? The industry's invested over 20 years in telling people how easy it is to deploy Wi-Fi, right? But the demands on these networks have increased exponentially since we started deploying Wi-Fi in the late 90s, right? The nice to have has now mission critical. Design for coverage is replaced with design for capacity, right? In short, Wi-Fi technology is much more complex and we, that means that you have increased sensitivity to bad settings, bad placement, just bad fi. Right? We used to be more robust to this in the early days. We're not anymore. So good Wi-Fi design becomes absolutely essential. But it isn't just out of ignorance that we're deploying Wi-Fi the wrong way. Right? There are plenty of industry resources out there for Wi-Fi engineers. We've encountered them here this week. There's CWMP, there are blogs. There are conferences like WLPC. Vendors have best practices which are actually surprisingly consistent from one vendor to another, right? Vendor-specific certifications that kind of enforce those best practices. The Wireless LAN Association, right? There's no excuse for ignorance in this day and age. But we still deploy it the wrong way, and even experts deploy it the wrong way from time to time. So why is that? Sometimes we have to. We don't have a choice. So why don't we have a choice? I'm a systems engineer by background. Before I got into Wi-Fi, I was a systems engineer. So I'm a requirements geek. I like knowing about requirements and constraints. So let me walk through a little bit about the requirements of Wi-Fi and the constraints on Wi-Fi. Requirements are what the network has to achieve. So when we talk about requirements on any network, we're talking about usage. What kind of devices are using the network? How are they connecting? How are they getting authenticated and so forth? We talk about coverage. What are the areas of the facility that need to have signal? What kind of signal strength do they need to have? What kind of overlap do they need to have? Capacity, how many simultaneous devices do I have to be able to handle on the network? Are there areas of high client density versus lower client density? I have to worry about control. So how am I going to monitor this network? How am I going to manage the network? How am I going to make sure it's actually working over time? And then finally, it's not just the Wi-Fi access points, right? What's providing power? What's providing backhaul? Do I have, I have to worry about my switches, my cabling, if I've got to do point-to-point -point or point-to-multipoint backhaul, right? All of that has to be folded into those requirements. Now, ideally, these requirements are solution neutral and they're independent of each other. Right, the types of devices I need to deploy, where I need to deploy them, how many of them I have to capture. Right, ideally, those should be independent of each other. And also, they should be solution neutral. They should not actually depend on what vendor I'm using or how I'm actually going to do it. But then I have constraints. And constraints are the things I have to work around. Limited budget, limited time to implement, aesthetics, the external RF environment, what kind of noise I have in the environment. Limitations in being able to run Ethernet cabling to where I want to run it to. Dictates to use particular AP vendors and models. Before going out on my own, I worked for a particular vendor for over two years as an SE. When, solution, when problems came to me, I had to use their equipment. Well, sometimes their equipment wasn't always the most appropriate for the problem. But that's a constraint. Many times you have a lack of information about the facility and sometimes you have lack of access to the facility. So these constraints are very solution dependent and they are highly coupled to each other and to the requirements. 
So what happens when you have too many constraints? Right? I'm showing the belt and suspenders. Right? I only need one to keep my pants up. Right? But here I've got too many constraints. What happens is the constraints drive the design. They don't, not the requirements. You want the requirements to be driving your design, but instead the constraints are driving your design. You're gonna satisfying the constraints becomes your design goal, not actually satisfying the ultimate requirements, which is what you really are targeting. It may become impossible to satisfy all of your requirements, especially simultaneously. Unfortunately for us in this industry, the over-constrained scenario is actually the common one. That's the one that we tend to work to every day, not the nice ideal one that we read about in the CWDP book. So how do we actually design in these cases, which are the real practical cases that we encounter in the world? The fundamentals are still fundamental, right? So when we're doing a design, there are really four knobs that I have to turn. There are four fundamental things that I have control over. I can pick what IP vendor I use along with what model. And if it's a model with external antennas, I also have some choice to, to go to my antenna partners and talk about what antennas I slap on those APs. I have control over where I put those APs in the facility. I have control over what channels I use on those APs on each band, and I have control over the transmit power, how loudly I allow those access points to talk. Now, we all know that these parameters are not independent of each other, and they require iteration. If I'm moving APs, chances are I've got to change the channels to adapt. And if I change the channels on one, guess what? That's going to propagate to changing the channels on the neighboring ones, which propagates to the neighboring ones. And before you know it, I've changed all the AP channels in the entire facility. Now, over constraints generally limit your degrees of freedom for at least one of these, if not more. So what are some common over constraints? First is, I can't put the APs where I want them. Now, why might that be? I might have a limitation in being able to run Ethernet cabling to where I want it to go. I might have aesthetics. Nobody likes seeing APs. Recommended solutions. Think a little creatively. Think a little out of the box. Directional antennas. I love directional antennas. Just talk to Smitty who's here in the room. He knows how much I love directional antennas. Um, if I'm limited in where I can put APs, put the APs there, use directional antennas to actually get the signal where I want it. Mesh, I hate mesh. I, I've debugged way too many mesh networks in my time to actually like mesh, but mesh actually works in certain circumstances if you design it right. So use mesh capable APs for applications where I really can't get wiring there and where performance is not absolutely critical or it's really more coverage driven versus capacity or performance driven. Think about also, if this is gonna let me go back, using wireless backhaul. I'm a big fan of point to point and point to multipoint. I've even used point to point indoors to, to decouple my access point providing Wi-Fi versus my access point providing backhaul. Think about using wireless backhaul, point to point, point, point to multi-point solutions, your wireless wire. Budget, another common constraint, just don't have the money. What does that mean? Lack of access, right? Can't do pre-deployment or post-deployment site surveys because nobody wants to pay for it. You might need to go with fewer APs or less expensive APs. Possible solutions, predictive modeling. In many scenarios, predictive modeling is good enough. Right, yes, it's not perfect. Yes, it's based on many simplified assumptions, but very often it, it actually can be sufficient. Um, again, though, if you're gonna rely on predictive modeling, the more information you can get out of the property, the, the better off the predictive model is gonna be. The, the worst predictive modeling scenarios I've encountered is where the property doesn't give you any information or very inadequate information. Be wary of leading edge. Let's be honest, 802.11n is actually quite sufficient in many design scenarios, especially in the SMB world that I work in. But even in some enterprise environments, 802.11n is perfectly fine, right? I don't need to go with 802.11n AC wave two for most scenarios. Um, mix and match, vendors hate it when I actually suggest this, but I've actually done this in my WISP days where I use higher end APs from one vendor in the high capacity areas and I use cheaper lower end APs from another vendor. 
in the coverage areas. I've used this a lot in hospitality. Finally, and I know I'm running a little over time, radio resource management. Remember I told you two out of your four knobs were channel and transmit power, but lots of installers are perfectly happy to seed half of their design knobs to software. Let the APs kind of figure it out themselves with RRM. Every vendor does it differently, and let's be honest, some vendors do it better than others. I have yet to encounter any vendor that does it right, and we've certainly had those debates. RRM usually breaks down in very complex scenarios, aka over-constrained scenarios. Turn it off. Use static channels, especially in complex over-constrained areas. Use your 1611 in, in alternating patterns, same on the five gigahertz band. Let the external networks adapt to you. Don't worry about adapting to them. It's your network. Let the other people around you adapt to you. Do static transmit power also. Turn down the power. Make sure there's a power offset between 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. In conclusion, it can, it can be done. Over-constrained scenarios are commonplace. We usually don't have the luxury of deploying Wi-Fi completely the right way. But you can still create good Wi-Fi designs. It's not an excuse. Understand your requirements. Understand your constraints. Think creatively. Don't over-constrain yourself. Pick the right AP for the job. And use all the design knobs that are available to you. And acknowledge that the right way may not necessarily be the way that you have to apply in this scenario. Thank you.